Hey guys, so today we're installing a line lock on the 1980 Chevy Love. Now, for those of you who don't understand what a line lock is, it's an actual solenoid that we're going to put in line, on this case, on our front brake lines. And what it does is, you depress your brake pedal, the brakes engage, then you press the button. At that point, you can let your foot off the brake pedal. It will keep the pressure in the lines of the front brakes and the front brakes stay engaged. At this point, I can use clutch and gas and do my burnout things or launch, whatever I need to do. At that point, whenever I'm ready to move, I let off the button, the brakes disengage, and the truck can go forward. Now, I bought this kit off of Jegs. It's, uh, it cost me about 70 bucks. The part number is a 63002. Now, it comes with a solenoid, it comes with a button, it comes with a fuse, but it does not come with brake lines. So I ran down to the auto parts store, bought two sticks of brake line, we'll be making those up today. Now, before we actually install this, let's get the hood off. First thing you need to figure out is, is the front of the master cylinder, the front brakes, or the rear brakes. Now, don't take it for granted. Ford, Chevy, everybody seems to do it different, okay? Now, this truck might be a Chevy Love, but it's made by Isuzu, okay? So, what I do to verify that I have exactly the right line is I'm gonna crack the bleeder on the front wheel, put my little vacuum on it, and suck the actual reservoir dry. Does two things. One, lets me know which one it is, and two, sucks all the fluid out of the reservoir so I don't have to clean it up off the floor. So, I do that right now. Alright, this is a pretty common problem right here. The bleeder on the wheel cylinder is stripped, okay? Especially when you're working on older cars. People have been using open-ended wrenches, which only grab on two sides, to undo these brass fittings. So, what you should be using is a line wrench. Now, I'll move closer so you can see. The line wrench, as you can see, grabs on about five, four, four to five sides. It has one side left open to slip it onto the line. What it does is ensure that it grips more sides of that brass nut effectively so that when you take and loosen it and tighten it, you don't strip out the brass fitting. At this point, vice grips are the only chance you got. So we're going to use these here, these auto grips, and get a grip on it so we can actually bleed this line and get the fluid out. Well, there you go. This time, the rear reservoir was the front brakes. So, we pumped it dry just using a vacuum bleeder with the inline tank, sucked it all out, so now we can actually take the line off without making a total mess. All right, the reservoir's been sucked dry, the brake line's been removed. So at this point, let's take a second, look at what came in the kit before we start the install. Instructions. This is the actual solenoid that we're going to put in line. The button we use to activate it. This is a fusible link and an indicator light. Alright, after taking a minute to read through the instructions, it wants me to mount the solenoid as far as away from heat as I can. So it's not near the headers or anything like that. Normal car, I would have put it on the wheel well, but we have no wheel wells. So I'm going to have to make a tab that goes on to the tubing and we'll take and mount it out there where the wheel well would have been and we'll secure the actual solenoid there. Quick note on this kit, read all the way through the instructions. It has eighth inch MPT outputs. So your brake line will thread in, but it's not right. It'll leak like crazy. So we're running out to the store, getting adapters, putting the adapters on either side, then we can hook the brake lines to it. All right, now that the solenoid is securely mounted in the truck, 
we're going to go ahead and start making the brake lines. Now I've got these pieces here, they're 48 inches long, I've got two of them. They cost about eight bucks each at your local auto parts store. I've got two different style benders, they act the same, but I have two of them here. We're going to go ahead and bend up these lines to the shape I need to connect to the proportional valve, to the solenoid, from the solenoid to the master. So we'll take a little bit of time and bend these up. All right, we've got the line from the master to the solenoid, from the solenoid to the proportional valve. Well, at that point is when I screwed up. The line lock goes after the proportional. It goes master, proportional, line lock. Let's fix it. At this point, I've gone ahead and put it back to stock. Okay, we're starting all over. The first thing we need to do is disconnect the lines to the front two wheels from the proportional valve. Now that both lines are disconnected, what we need to do is plug one of those off. So we're going to use an inverted flare plug. And that's not something you pick up at Depot. You probably got to go to Auto Parts Store to get. We're going to go ahead and Teflon it. You're not required to, but I do it anyway just to make sure it doesn't leak. We'll get that in. Now that one line is plugged off, we need to take the other line, and that's our feed line to our line lock. So we need to create a line from the one open port on the proportional to the end on the line lock. Now the line out on the line lock needs to go to a T. That T is going to feed both front wheels. So we're going to need to put in a T and make another line. Now the T's in place, we had to extend that other line just because it was so bent up from the factory we couldn't get a fitting on. So I went ahead and just shortened it back, put a couple, and ran a new line. Now what we've got to do now is run a line from the out of the line lock to the T. That way you can feed the front brakes. So we're going to build up another line and get that hooked up. Now that's all plumbed out, all we have left to do is bleed the brakes, okay? Now you see the proper way to install the line lock, after the proportional valve. Now yes, it takes a few more lines and some time, but my brakes are going to work, I'm not going to run out the back of the track, smash my truck up, or get hurt even. So, we're going to go ahead and bleed the brakes. This is the button it comes with for the steering wheel. This is my wheel. So what we're going to do is thread it through one of the holes that it'll fit in and go ahead and mount it to the steering wheel. All right, now that all the components have been installed, it's time to go ahead and wire it. Now they give you a fusible link and an indicator light. So, of course, we always want to fuse any power wires. What you need to do is when the button hits, it actually powers up the solenoid and the indicator light. Pretty simple install. A little hard to see in the truck, but I'll do my best so you actually see what I'm doing. Now I'm doing mine a little different. Okay, instead of putting that little fuse block over on the battery or ignition hot. I'm using one of my switches that's already fused just to eliminate from having to do that step. And this gives me an on off switch to energize the system or turn it off. So if I'm just driving around, I don't need the line lock on, I just leave the switch off. But when I'm ready to race, my fan, my fuel pump, my line lock, everything comes alive, ready to go.
All right, well, I drove the truck to work today, did a few stops, a couple of takeoffs to make sure the line lock actually works. Now, the one thing left we got to do is to do a burnout with it. Well, guys, after a week in a racing, I have to say I love this line lock. I can pull it into the burnout box, lock the front brakes, and fry the tires as long as I want to to get them hot. It also helps me in staging because I can roll in, lock it, hold the truck in place, and I'm just worried about the light to take off. So I'm pretty sure any truck I build the race, I'll be putting a line lock on it. That's for sure. Well, hopefully this video showed you the right way to do it and the wrong way. But hopefully you got something out of it. You guys do me a favor. Like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next